But don't miss our first look at the brand new Imperial Armor for Chaos. Spiky Bits. What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear with you again today, taking a look at the new Imperial Armor book for Chaos. Of course, this is the new updated to 8th edition 40k rule set that has all those great data sheets for the big baddies from Forge Roller Cells. Now, this particular book is 15 pounds, which I guess is about $20 American, give or take, plus shipping, etc, etc. Uh, processing fees and things. Every time I use my credit card on Forge World site, they bill me like a $25 international transaction fee, so watch out for that too. And they actually charge me tax too here in the, here in the States, so it's like 10% or something. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> 15 pounds, Forge World. <laughs> of course, you know the web, the web address, forgeworld.co.uk. Uh, this particular book here is 88 pages. And it contains, I think, roughly 73 data sheets, I want to say it is. Now, this one's laid out a little bit better than the uh, Imperial Armor one for uh, Space Marines, wherein it's, it is kind of divided up in each of the sections in the back of the book themselves uh, for the points values. Uh, and I, of course, I made some photocopies just so it's easier to do points values. And I got it on like a little cardstock because when I'm flipping through looking at something okay what do I need all right and then I just if I have this sheet handy I can just be like okay that that and that and then point it all up because that's kind of the way it goes now so everything is divided up a lot better in the back of this book than the uh, like I said the Space Marine one here but here you can see all the sections like I said it's 88 pages here uh, everything kind of is where it, where it makes sense like the uh, Irene cults basically the flyers Irene cults of course has something to do with birds I don't I don't know that one didn't look it up sorry folks but that's all your flyers Lords of Ruin is gonna be all of your um, what are these guys the like dude duders these are just like humans that uh, kind of fell to chaos children of the warp your demons Demon Bound is kind of your stuff that's uh, demons trapped inside of vehicles, and then the Hellforge is just Space Marine vehicles that are, you know, I guess made in Hellforged uh, pits of whatever it is, the Dark Mechanicum, right? Trader Crest Taurus, that's your Renegade Knights, and of course they got all the flavors of the uh, Serastus Rainbow right there, and of course the Porphyrion. Chaos Titans, those are your straight up battle titans, including the new Warlord Titan, which uh, hasn't been out that long at all, and all the appendices in the back with all your point values and things like that. Now, I'm not gonna show you each and every one of these, you know, 73 data sheets here, I kinda, we got a top five, which I think is a, is a solid choice here, but a couple of things real quick that you need to be aware of is some special rules. Macro weapons, uh, well, those really just apply to Titan. So, you know, we're not gonna cover the Titans themselves in here, but I can tell you right off the bat that the Chaos Warlord Titan is 4,000 points, plus it has 70 wounds on it. But uh, <laughs> I feel like that's not exactly the stuff that everybody's going to want to know. It's going to be more kind of stuff playing in normal games of 8th edition, so we're going to focus more on that. So we're not going to cover... You need to be aware that the macro weapon rule is in here, and if you do plan on playing with either you know, a Reaver, Warhound, or of course the Warlord, uh, check that one out there. Now, the Arch Demonic Ritual is a little bit different from the Demonic Ritual in the Chaos Demon section of the Index... Uh, the, uh, the Imperial... What are they? Index Chaos... One, I guess there isn't two of those yet, right? So this one differs a little bit because you get to roll nine dice, okay, to try to summon them in off their power level. Like for instance, Angrath, which we're gonna cover is 35 power level, so you got nine dice to try to throw at that. Uh, doubles, you take a mortal wound, whoever's trying to bring them in, and triples, they just die, which is a lot different from the way you summon them in in the current Index Chaos Demon rules in here. So be aware of that right there. You can leave the big baddies in reserve, so to speak, but there is a penalty. There is always a price to pay. Now, why you wouldn't want to set up somebody like Angrath on the table to begin with, I don't really know, but it is definitely in your prerogative right there, but that's the rule uh, to do it. So let's take a look at some Demon Bound right here. The one I wanted to touch on is the Kaitan Ravenger, which is that really neat kind of walking Lord of Skulls, and the Lord of Skulls was in the Chaos book itself 
for you know the Chaos Index book that came out. Now the Kaitan Ravager is pretty cool. Like I said, it's the walking version of the Lord of Skulls. It has the same great cleaver of corn with the two different weapon profiles here. One for smashing, which is just like a straight attack. The double strength, uh, neg 4 AP and D6 damage. So it's your strength that your full power is going to be strength 20. That's pretty significant. So you're going to be wounded on twos most of the time. Slash is, of course, if you're going up against multiple targets that might be within one inch of you. Strength of user, which is just going to be 10 for the most part until you take uh, more than half damage. Neg 2 AP, D3 damage. Make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. So if you throw all, say, five of your attacks into it, you're going to be rolling 15 dice to hit here, right? So that's, uh, that's pretty good for multiple targets. Smash is good for single targets. And of course, it has great offensive firepower, uh, although be it at an expensive price, with the Kaitan Gatling Cannon. Range 48, Heavy 8, Strength 8, Neg 2 AP, D2 damage. Now you're like, okay, that's 8 shots. I can get behind that. It's, uh, you know, Weapon Skill 3, Ballistic Skill 3. So it's hitting on 3s, and there's some ways to manipulate that, of course, with Chaos itself. Uh, they have Dirty Dirty Sorcerer powers, of course. Uh, a couple other ways to do it as well. So you can theoretically, you know, you can name it Heretic Astartes and then bracket Legion as well. Technically it is corn, so therefore I believe the stuff for the market corn confers to it as well. Um, there was a little bit of confusion. Forge World put out a statement on their Facebook page about how to use these with stuff because there's benefits for Marka Zinch and Marka Nurgle. They didn't really touch on the corn one, but I would imagine it works the same, so make sure you check that out their little FAQ over on their uh, Facebook page. I'm sure in subsequent printings of this book, it'll probably be cleaned up if it needs to be. Demon Engine, Scott of Five good to go there. And Titanic Demon Engine, it can, of course, do that trick where even if there are enemy animals within one inch, it can still shoot. Uh, as long as all of the enemy models have the infantry keyword, so no vehicles, no, you know, um, airborne stuff, etc, etc. Uh, they may also target another invisible enemy that was within range of more than one inch away, so that's kind of cool. Battle Walker and making advanced rolls with this model roll 2d6 to determine the maximum distance it may move. And of course, if it's re reduced to zero wounds, it may blow up on a six, so just the standard explosion value right there. So. Not too super crazy, uh, but it can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to hit uh, the neg one to hit. And it only gains its save and cover if at least half of the models are obscured from the bear. So this thing's obviously pretty big, so it's gonna be very hard to get a cover save on it, and I think that was their intent right there. So not too bad. When you check out the points on this bad boy, you're looking at 330 base plus 184 for that Gatling cannon, believe it or not. And that may seem like a very steep price to pay, but for this weapon, which is, for the most part is gonna be wounding things on twos, and at neg two doing two damage, this thing could definitely mow through a squad, because you figure you hit on threes, so you're gonna be looking at getting, you know, an, on eight, you're gonna be getting about five hits. So it can mow down a squad of Terminators in one volley for the most part, assuming they don't have an invulnerable of like a three up or, or something like that, and, you know, maybe pass some of those. But uh, it, it can shred elite level troops and that might be why they're looking for that. So this is gonna cost you about 514 points uh, to field on the tabletop there. Now in the Hellforge section, we've seen a lot of stuff in here. We saw the Leviathan, which I think is pretty good. I don't think we're going to spend time on anything in here, um, just all the normal versions of the Astarte stuff, but I did want to mention that something a little different from the Astartes ones is they don't have the, the track melee weapon, they have something called Eternal Hunger, and depending on what chassis a weapon it is, it'll either do Strength of User Neg 3 AP 1 damage for like the Spartan kind of chassis tank style here, or if you're on the larger Fellblade chassis style, it's going to do D3 damage. So a very important distinction that they made right there that my, uh, some people may not have noticed. I double checked it all because I thought it might have been a typo, but it does look like all the Spartan chassis are just one damage and all of the Baneblade slash Fellblade chassis are the larger D3. And of course the Mastodon is just a ginormous uh, to begin with, so that makes sense there too. Uh, also along with the Astartes version of, well, not the Hell Talent, the Fire Raptor there is no auto cannon profile in here but now a mysterious twin last cannon profile so I'm not sure where that's coming from if that's a typo again I did mention it in our review of the Adeptus Astartes one but just be aware of that the model doesn't come with last cannons as far as I know I've always seen it with either the quad heavy bolters or the auto cannon so I don't know if that's a new thing 
Maybe they maybe the option selected it and didn't tell anybody, but that's uh, that's the print on both versions. So we'll go with it. I don't I don't know what to say there. <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't know yet. Uh, Lords of Ruin, those are those human duders that went over to chaos. Children of the Warp. Well, of course, we've got Angrath the Unbound. The eight, the former 880 eight point monster of corn right here. Now he's checking in with a lot of good stats. Weapon skill two. <laughs> Good, <laughs> so good. Weapon skill two. I love hitting things on two in combat. Uh, ballistic skill four. Okay, I can make that concession. I'm I'm down with that. It does have a shooting weapon at 12 inch range, which used to be a the profile of a plasma pistol. Now a little bit better. Assault two d6. Strength seven. They get three AP. Two damage. Um, and it can of course be used within one inch of an enemy unit and can target units within one inch of friendly units. So, okay, seems good. Nothing, nothing I see here I dislike so far. Toughness save, 24 wounds, 2 up save, very cool. 4 up and vulnerable save. Wow, this, this guy just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Let's push our luck here, right? Um, <laughs> it can uh, perform a heroic intervention. It also, friendly corn units within 9 can use his morale. Sign of the Blood God, any uh, Angrath the Unbomb may be used to attempt to, uh, to dispel 2 psychic powers and adds three to any attempt to do so also very good we're liking it let's keep going shattering onslaught basically a hammer of wrath any unit that it charges uh roll a d6 for each unit within one at the end of the charge move on a two up the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds <laughs> still loving it wow so good frenzy death thrones uh when he, i guess when he does eventually die on a four up each unit within d6 suffers d6 mortal wounds it just doesn't get any better it just it just keeps going it's crazy but wait there's more let's take a look at the axe of corn right here melee weapon okay fair enough plus three strength hmm that's a that's a strength of 15 not quite 16 which might quite possibly have been overpowered because then toughness eight things it would be wounding on a two but no it is not Power level 11, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's obviously power level 13, but they didn't take it all the way up to 11. It is only streaked 15, which for, for, for good reason, like I said, first points value, I think it'd be a little OP at that point. Uh, neg 4 AP damage on that, D6 damage on that, but let's take a look here. This guy has literally 10 attacks with this Axe of Corn that does D6 damage at strength 15, plus the mortal wounds on the charge, plus the invulnerable, plus he can fly, this bad boy clocks in at a mere 700 points to field. Now you might be like, that's a lot of points. That's not a lot of points anymore in 8th edition. And it's definitely way less than his previous version of 888 points. And I tell you what, man, this guy has the potential to do the Lord's work on the tabletop for your Chaos Armies. And we all know what Lord we're talking about right there. Am I right? Uh, okay, so that was the big thing. I love that guy. I've had, I've literally had that model for ten years, and I, I can count on the, on my hands, the number of times I've actually played with him. But I feel like that is going to greatly increase here in the future. Next up, we got the Renegade Knight section here. We got the Lancer, and we're going to also talk about the Atropos as well. The now this is the preview. Of course, we haven't seen the rules for the Imperial versions of this. Of course, the Imperial Knights that will be in the Astra Militarum book, which currently isn't out yet. But I'm sure by the time this video comes out, it will be available from Forge Run and of course Warhammer Digital as well. Renegade Knight Lancer, of course, tough to say, strength eight. Obviously, one of the reasons that the Axe of Corn and the Angrath himself is not strength sixteen because he'd be wounding things like this on a two. Twenty-seven wounds, four attacks, leadership of nine, and a three-up save right here. Now they flip-flopped it. Previously, he had a four-up save to shooting and a five-up in invulnerable. Now he has a five-up to shooting, a five-up in vulnerable, and a four-up to close combat. There also can regain a wound on a roll of d6. Uh, a, a result of a 5 on a d6. Flank speed, everybody's got flank speed now apparently on the Strassus pattern. Roll 2d6 and add the results together to determine the maximum distance it can uh, move when it, it when it advanced rolls. And it is an Infernal Knight Titan, so it can fall back over top of infantry units as long as it ends its move within one inch. Can move and fire heavy weapons without a penalty and gains a bonus for being in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the bear which makes sense uh, if it explodes or if it dies roll a d6 on a six up it deals damage within 2d6 to everybody and they are going to take a d6 mortal wound so one in six chance right there so i think uh overall 
got a little bit better. Now the pricier, of course, than what we've seen in the past, 420 plus 60 for the uh, Shock Lance right there is gonna get you a total of 480 all day on the new Knight Lancer here. And then the Renegade Knight Atropos works a lot different than he did in the past. Um, I'm sure the Loyalist version will, of course, uh, be about the same, but it won't have the things like Ancient Evil or the Auto Samurakula here. Now, has a 4-up invulnerable save against shooting attacks and a 5-up against melee, so that's the flip-flop. That's what the Lancer used to previously be right there. And, of course, you've got the uh, last cutter with two profiles. You can use it in melee. You can also use it in shooting. The Graviton Singularity Cannon is back. And the Titanic Cappy Feet ported over from uh, the normal Night Titan pattern. Now, the, uh, the Night Lancer also has that. I did not mention that there. Of course, you make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. So you have a maximum of 12 attacks right there. Again, maximum of 12 attacks with the Atropos here. So the last cutter and shooting is a really cool weapon. It's strength 10, neg 4 AP, d6 damage. And if you coup de gras a vehicle or a monster that is kill it with that attack, then you can immediately get another attack. So theoretically, you want to uh, call your shots with this one and try to maximize the potential there. But being only 9 inch range, you're going to probably have to do it as you close the gap to assault something here. And Atropos, the last cutter, melee, strength 14, neg 4 AP, D6 damage as well, very similar to the Reaper Chainsword. Uh, Reroll failed runes to hit and to roll for this weapon to get that targets monster, building, and vehicle. So obviously, uh, there's a theme here. This guy's a, a large target shredder. Graviton Singularity Cannon, 36 inch range, heavy 4. It's going to be uh, with those 4 shots, strength 8, neg 3 AP, 3 damage. And you roll a dice each time you fire this. On a one, it's bad, but on a six, it's good. On a one, the bear suffers a mortal wound, but the weapon fires normally. On a two to five, the attack is carried out using the listed profile. And on a roll of six, the weapon's attacks instead carried out in a single strength 16 AP neg four damage six instead of its normal profile. Six uh, Strength 16, of course, is significant because there's a lot of things out there, such as these big targets, these big walkers that are toughness eight. So you'll be wounding on twos at that point. And let me tell you what, neg four with six damage getting through could be the difference between uh, life and death for one of those large targets right there. So there's the Atropos. Like I said, it's got a couple other things right here. You can regain a wound on a five up, uh, the flip flop of the invulnerable from shooting and melee. And then of course, uh, all enemy models subtract one from the leadership within six inches of this bad boy right here. It blows up spectacularly on a five up indeed has an unstable reactor, so everybody within 2d6 will take d6 mortal wounds, uh, one in three chance right there when this guy loses his last wound, and of course all the renegade knights are in here. Uh, as far as titans go, like I said, the warlord battle titan, 70 wounds, all sorts of crazy weapons, we're not even going to cover it, but I think they're all free, you just pay your 4,000 points and you're good to go. Uh, we skipped something, what did we skip? Oh, we skipped the brass scorpion, I love that thing, uh, where's the brass scorpion at? Brass scorpion uh, was previewed by Forge World in their big ramp up to the release of 8th edition. There it is right there. Greater Brass Scorpion of Corn, a uh, fantastic kit from Games Workshop. Very easy to airbrush and paint separately. Uh, there's a ton of tutorials online. Kenny, uh, Kenny did a bunch over on Next Level Painting for this bad boy here. So, oh, and uh, the Atropos is gonna check in at 555 points. You have to pay for both the Singularity Cannon and the Atropos Last Cutter. My bad right there. So Greater Brass Scorpion of Corn, uh, weapon skill three, ballistic skill three, toughness eight, eight. It, remember, sixteen, string sixteen. That's where you go. That's where you want to be to hurt the big stuff. But if you can't, yeah, you're still gonna be wounded, but not as good as you want to be. Only twenty wounds. Brass Scorpion of Corn never really had a lot of ass. It was always just kind of a uh, paper tiger of sorts, and then it would explode in usually a spectacular fashion, which we're gonna see. It's Doom Day Reactor uh, blows up on a four up. If you lose that last wound, everything within two d6 is gonna take d6 mortal wounds. So kind of very themey to what it was in the past right there of course it's going to be a uh, strength 10 for the most part with eight attacks till it takes more than half damage there now remember it does have a pistol weapon and you cannot fire other weapons and a pistol in the same volley so you keep that in mind uh, as you're closing the gap these are really just meant to be used in combat but it does have the titanic demon engine rule which allows it to target things outside of one inch inside of one inch it can also fall back over enemy models to have the infantry keyword, but nothing else, uh, as long as you end your move within one inch. Roll 3d6 
for Brass Scorpion's move in advance, which is pretty cool. We saw that in the past, but not the charge. It's just the advance right there. Ruins of the Blood God, when a Psyker attempts to manifest a psychic power that inflicts mortal wounds on the Greater Brass Scorpion, the Psyker suffers Perils of the Warp on any roll of a double, not just one or double ones or double sixes, as would normally be the case. And remember, powers go off until they actually kill themselves, because uh, D3 uh, from taking the Perils right there, but most Psykers only have about five wounds, so that could be pretty bad for them. You can regenerate one wound automatically right there, and he does have a 5-up and vulnerable save. Now let's take a look at some of his weapons here. Uh, great melee weapons right here, going up to 14 strength, neg 4 AP, D6 damage. Or you could throw the attacks. Uh, well, actually, that's his only melee, melee attack right there, so that's what you're going to want to throw most of his attacks into. He does have this pistol attack right here, which you could use both in combat and the melee phase. Remember, pistols can be used in melee, but they can also be used in shooting. But why would you use your pistols when you can actually are eligible to use these heavy weapons because of the Titanic Demon Engine rule right there? So this you can use in melee, this can, you can use in shooting, and pretty much if you're within one inch of anything, you can use all of these, which is pretty cool. Um, but remember, Greater Brass Scorpion Corn, only a 3-up save, 5-up and vulnerable. It will get burned down pretty quick by dedicated assault units that uh, can bring their, <clears throat> you know, their Billy Badasses to take this guy out here. Uh, so the Scorpion Cannons, 10 shots at a uh, strength of 6, neg 2 AP, D, 2 damage, or excuse me, just 2 damage right there. And the Soul Shatter Bombard, 24 inch range, heavy D6, 12 inch, or excuse me, 12 uh, strength, neg 3 AP, does D6 damage. And against vehicle building and monster units, it does 2 D6 damage right there. So he is... For his points, I think definitely worth taking if you can squeeze him into your army. He's 625 plus zero. Now he is one of the more expensive units we reviewed today, but he definitely makes our top five nonetheless because he is a, uh, he's kind of a, you know, you charge in, you get it done. If he survives, well, hey, he's going to do some other stuff too uh, until he blows up and then he might do even more stuff. So he's a, he's a very, very fun and themey corn unit right there. So that is pretty much all the units we wanted to touch on today in this book here like I said 15 pound book from uh, forgeworld.co.uk definitely worth taking if you have any of the Forge World units and of course just to be aware of uh, the, what stuff does out there and what stuff might do back to you here in the new edition of Warhammer 40k 8th edition now if you like our video features here on this channel make sure you subscribe and also turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like or thumbs up and comment on our videos and head on over to longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more become a veteran of the long war today